Well, hey there, everybody. This is Justin Dyke from CartoonSmart.com, and uh, I welcome you to the first of uh, probably three uh, lessons on uh, creating a role-playing game with uh, Sprite Kit. This first one is going to be entirely focused on creating a, uh, a, a hero character and a kind of a hero trail of characters inside of a uh, little world. And, of course, that's what I'm walking around in right here if I run into the border I will uh, lose a little bit of a uh, health and uh, later on what we'll do is uh, in, in a future lesson we'll populate this entire world with um, all sorts of coins and you know pitfalls whatever it is doors things like that but for right now when we're just working with our hero hero I've gotten us as far as basically just a, a basic boundary and uh, some background art there uh, and believe me there's enough to teach just with uh, creating this little setup with uh, damageable and attackable heroes you can see I can uh, touch and it will attack. Uh, some other little options you can put in here are to uh, rotate and that will uh, kind of bring your characters back into a, uh, a formation or a line or kind of regroup them. Uh, another thing you can do is uh, switch out leaders. So if you double tap that will now make this little green blobby guy um, into the leader and you can see he's kind of the one centered now and these guys are following around and um, you can also uh, triple tap and that would um, that would make the third character in the line um, be the uh, the leader but uh, in the simulator here I only have the option to uh, double tap so uh, at least I don't think there's a triple tap up here in the menu so anyway that is um, that, that's kind of the bare bones of what is going on here but I'm going to show you guys lots of little options you can set with a, uh, a property list to change um, the character art uh, if they have physics bodies and they do have physics bodies it's a uh, you're, uh, we're walking around inside of a physics-based world. It just doesn't have the uh, the gravity set on, so nobody is kind of sinking to the uh, to the bottom. But uh, that is uh, something that you could add, and and uh, don't feel limited to this just being a role-playing game. Uh, this could be a, a a marble game, and each one of these could just be marbles, and they they bounce around and they try to land in a hole or something like that. Um, so. I just chose a role-playing game because, well, I was a big fan of Fantasy Star. <laughs> uh, I wasn't a Zelda guy, I was a Fantasy Star guy because I had the Genesis and Sega as a kid, so we're going to kind of go with that. And um, I should note that uh, the the frame rate for this in a simulator is, is about 30 frames per second, but as soon as you get this onto your device, it's going to be at 60 frames per second. And I test with a uh, iPhone 4S and a iPad uh, 2 and 3, and I'm consistently getting about 60 frames per second most of the time a little bit of the time it'll dip down to like uh, 59 or something like that so uh, it runs quite smooth so let's talk a little bit about the um, the property list and um, we'll probably publish this again to show you some changes but uh, let me go find our Xcode project okay so uh, you can set just about anything from inside of the uh, the property list here, but I don't want you guys to think of this as a, a starter kit because um, I do want to teach everything inside of here and uh, give you guys you know the kind of full know-how of uh, how to change everything. But you know, essentially, when everything is said and done, this will, this whole project could kind of be like a uh, a property list. So again, we're just going to be dealing with heroes in. Um, in this series of lessons and we'll move on to enemies and then uh, the level map later on but uh, I have of course gone in here and, and put in like the background uh, you can shrink the background border by 0.9% uh, so if I were to set this to yes and uh, republish this you would actually see the uh, the border that um, is kind of keeping these uh, characters in so let me walk over there. So there you go. That's the, uh, the that green indicates the border. And in fact, if you go over here to uh, characters, what you can do is um, set that for all of them as well. I'll just do one of them real quick. And uh, achievements. This is something I was thinking about for later on. You, you could uh, do that in Game Center foreground. There's no foreground art, but you could uh, put like an extra layer on top of everything. And then coins to level up. These are just things that I was kind of loosely planning out later. So obviously there's no coins in here right now. So and, uh, and anyway, back to the uh, the published version. So there's the uh, there's the the boundary that is making up, or the physics border that's making up um, 
this uh, character right here. So uh, let's keep going on. Uh, follow delay. Uh, just briefly, I'll go through some, kind of these main properties. Uh, it's 0.25, so it takes them about a quarter of a second for the, anybody that is walking around behind this guy to uh, react to you know a change in direction and things like that. You can um, you can lessen that, and you can also uh, just entirely disable this by going over here and saying use follow delay equals no. And if you set that, oh, you know I didn't save that, so it might not have registered it let's find out but if you set that to know then it's kind of a they kind of immediately loop around like that and um, let's go pick up one more character so it's obvious there you go uh, I like the follow delay in there I think it's a little bit more realistic uh, so we're gonna just keep that as yeah, uh, yes and um, let's uh, let's take a look at our characters so obviously we have three of them on the board right here or we did and um, each one of them is um, kind of swappable with the next. You don't have to specify anybody as the particular leader, although whatever the first item in here is, that's going to be your leader, obviously. Uh, otherwise, um, I mean, not otherwise, I could just drag these up and down to, um, to, to kind of change the order of them uh, at any time. They're just identical. And uh, let's go through them. What I'm getting at is we all, we only need to talk about one of these in here, I guess. So your base frame, this always gets drawn from uh, the image dot assets folder over here, or the XC assets folder, and uh, this would be your uh, base image right here, your uh, character. In the blobs case, it's obviously this uh, blob one over here. So again, character. You don't have to put in character dot png or anything like that just put in the name that you have set right here and um, because this is a universal app we just have our uh, standard definition one and our uh, HD one over here and then the um, any other frames that you're going to include for this character and all of them are optional if you have walking frames side view frames attack frames uh, they should all be the same size as this main base image right here okay otherwise you get into kind of sizing issues where they kind of go up and down uh, you want them all to have that uh, same exact size and uh, start location this is an obvious one um, zero zero so our character was just right in the middle there let's build this again um, and then for some of the other ones, obviously they were offset from that. So negative 300, 300, that would be like 300 up and 300 over here, negative from that. And uh, let's go back to the first character. Use for use for collisions. Any one of your characters can, um, well, well, anybody that's following the leader can optionally um, use collisions. The, the leader always needs to have some sort of physics body around him, but if you set this to no, that means that uh, if that character was not in the lead, then they don't uh, they don't have a physics border around them and they, they're not going to necessarily collide with things. But I think in general you're probably going to uh, want to keep that to yes. And then collision body type, this can be a, a circle or a square and you can also change the um, collision body covers what percentage. So right now one is 100% but if I put this down to uh, 0.5 and I were to uh, publish this again with debu debug body set to yes, which it is uh, you would see that there you go so it's a square shape but it's only covering about half of uh, the uh, the character I uh, I prefer that at uh, using a circle so we'll put that back circle and then um, your frames per second you uh, you might just assume hey I want that to be 60 frames per second because that's how fast I want it to run but um, that that's not necessarily the case the um, uh, the the frame rate of the uh, the app is separate from this F FPS right here. This basically just sets uh, how quickly your animated frames run through. Okay, and uh, just depending on how many you have. Uh, for example, I've got for most of my sequences here, like the walking sequences, I've got about eight frames, and I think setting them down a little bit from 60 frames per second. Um, makes for a more realistic walk okay in some sense you're kind of I'm kind of dropping every two frames to, to make it uh, I mean an eight frame walk cycle is really fast but um, if I had let's say 30 frames if I felt like drawing out all that many then maybe then I'd want to run through the animation at 60 frames per second or a bit quicker so that's why um, that's why I set that and you can just toggle it um, 
and then uh, use resting frames. So for every one of these um, kind of uh, arrays full of frames, you can use them. You can optionally set them or, or not set them. And I kind of assume that was set to yes because I do have resting frames. So um, you, you might be able to see right here. Wait, watch this. So if I stop these guys, he's got a resting frame sequence, whereas I, I had this one set to no. Okay, so that's the difference. And uh, again, you just uh, put all these inside of here into your resting frames array. And um, you can even use the same frame over again. So you can see that I've got frame one, frame two, frame three, frame four. Those kind of make the character breathe up. And then to make the character breathe back down, you can just repeat back some of those same frames that you had before, and they'll be in a loop like that. And then you set the atlas file, okay, resting atlas file is set to still, and that is this folder right here. And these are just, um, when you create these, they're just folders with dot atlas at the end, and you just kind of dump them into your project, which we'll talk about in the tutorial. And uh, here are the actual frames for the uh, the character resting. So let's keep and actually I was gonna say let's keep going through here, but all of these function the same exact way. Uh, so you just basically decide: Do I want to use them? Use front view frames. Use side view frames. Use back view frames. All of them have a corresponding atlas file. It, they could be in the same atlas file, but because I had kind of a a, a lot of these, I just started dividing them up into um, different atlas files right here. And uh, I'm pretty sure the way that Xcode handles this is that if you have too many frames to fit into one image file, because that's what happens um, with these, these are basically just sprite sheets and it'll combine the images together and kind of optimize them into one image file and load only that. Uh, I believe if you have too many images to fit into one giant image, it'll Xcode will behind the scenes um, figure out what to do. But um, you know, in, in all these cases, it's just this image this image, this image, just your standard and your lower definition ones. You do have to name them at 2x for the HD ones. Okay. Um, so going back over here, I just want to remind you one more time, you don't have to put in the .png or the at 2x for any of these. You just put in that base name. And it will figure out what to do. All right, so we get to scroll down a little bit. Uh, all right, does... A, um, does attack when not the leader, right? So does the character attack when he's not the leader? I set that to be no. You can um, set that to uh, yes until we have actually something in here in here to attack. It really doesn't matter too much, but you can see that um, you know if you click down, it'll make that little attack animation and uh, front attack atlas. So again, if you want to um, make a, a separate animation for attacking, you set that to yes. You specify the atlas file, put in the frames. And there you go. Uh, same thing for side attack, back attack, and then um, and the back one is just when he's moving up. I say back, but it's because there's a back view there, right? And uh, all right, so use attack particles if you want to include a uh, a particle sequence in there. And you can see that I did actually have a particle sequence in all of mine. Then uh, you put that to be yes. You, then you specify the attack particle file and um, in th that case, it's Spark. You don't have to put .sks afterwards. So you over here, and um, here is that Spark. And uh, these are all created um, within Xcode. So you go over here if you need to make a new one. File, new, file. I know that's getting cut off a little bit. And, uh, and then you go over to resource. It's part of Sprite Kit particle file. And let's just name it anything. It doesn't matter. And there you go. So now you've got my particle.sks. And if you ever want to just toggle around the settings on that, you go over here. And of course, we'll talk about all this again later on. But um, I just want to demo how quickly it is, how quick and easy it is to create these. And then particles to emit. Um, I put this to a relatively low number so that there's only, you know, 15 of them that um, 15 of those particles that get creative created and you can actually see the node count go up to um, see it goes up to 24 and then dips back down and then uh, particle delay that's um, if I had set that to one it would be one second so after you attack the particles would appear one second later and uh, I set that in there because when they appeared right away it just seemed like a little bit too quick and then you can set um, has own health to uh, yes or no so uh, the um, so the following characters 
would uh, would either not have health uh, their health bars set above them. And as you can see, I do have the um, those um, set in there. And then um, that's a, oh, you know what? <laughs> I was like, what? Well, why is this guy suddenly the leader? And it's because I was running around these guys so much that they both. I guess this guy here. Wait. The 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 uh, the leader died, and then he just became the uh, the leader over there. Go get him back. All right, so then uh, health. Uh, this is kind of an arbitrary number right here. It's set to 100, and um, I think that's a good number to like a good base number in there. But it really doesn't matter what you set it at. Uh, you can put that at a thousand. But just keep in mind that um, for things like this, level border causes damage by 25. So right now, it, it t if you run to the wall four times, you die. If you'd set your health to a thousand. Then realistically, the border—I mean, the the border doesn't really kill you. You know, you're not going to run into it. Uh, you know, 40 times probably. Uh, it does damage, and um, this is uh, this is set to yes. And again, this is going to be something that we play with uh, when we actually have enemies to attack, things like that. And then uh, following enabled. So this is set to uh, no or yes. And um, for the leader, it doesn't matter. So whoever is the first one in the list here, doesn't matter if it's set to yes or no, but uh, for any other characters in here, if you set this to no, that means that they're going to just show up kind of waiting to be uh, collided with and touched, basically tapped into the game. Uh, whereas if you'd set that to uh, yes, they're immediately going to be following uh, the, the character around. And then that is um, that's about it. So we've got, uh, believe me, we've got plenty to talk about in this initial series of uh, in this yeah series of lessons. We're gonna break this up into what will hopefully be about ten to twenty minute lessons covering everything that uh, I've just talked about setting up here. And I hope you enjoy it because there's gonna be a lot more to talk about down the road. And in the end, we're gonna have an awesome uh, project.